大家好，歡迎嚟到呢度上第三十七集嘅 Facebook 直播。我哋今集比較特別，因為我哋講嘅唔係一邊普通嘅一啲補習，而係一啲比較特別嘅嘢。我哋嘅主題就係關於一啲 English acronym， 可能你未聽過嘅，例如 PAT、ENGA、MAT、STEP、STEP 咁樣。其實呢啲都係一啲牛津劍橋嘅入學考試。同埋一啲、uh, extra 嘅，例如 math challenge 啦。如果你喺英國讀書嘅話，你應該會聽過，甚至係英國嘅奧林匹克數學等等。咁既然有啲特別少少嘅題目嘅話，我哋當然要請一個可能特別少少嘅老師。咁所以我哋今集請到嘅係 David 老師，佢係我哋補習社其中一位老師，但係佢唔係做一般嘅補習嘅，因為一般嘅補習我哋可能講緊嘅係英文啊、數學啊，就算係數學都係一般嘅數學。但係 David 老師係比較特別嘅一位老師，因為佢係專係接一啲。特別嘅補習嘅，例如我頭先提到嘅關於牛津劍橋嘅入學考試嘅補習啦，甚至佢數學嘅話都淨係會補誒、呃、奧林匹克數學啊，特別嘅數學入學考試啊等等呢一類型，佢係專門做呢一類型嘅，所以佢係算係比較特別嘅一位老師嘅。Good morning, David. Hello. Good morning. Yeah. How are you doing? You right? Yeah, fine. Thanks. Yeah, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, yeah, the parents are very interested in some topics about Oxbridge um entry exams. Um, can you give us some like brief introductions? What are those popular um entry exams of Oxbridge? Yeah, sure, no problem. So for physics and engineering for Oxford, you have the physics aptitude test, which we're going to abbreviate to PAT. And so on. Is that okay? And for engineering and natural sciences, um, engineering via natural sciences, you have the engineering emissions assessment for Cambridge. Which we're going to abbreviate to um the NGAA or ENGA. So do most tuition for. So if you want to apply to Oxford for physics or engineering, it turns out that A-levels are not difficult enough for the tutors to tell who the best students are. And they, they need an extra test, which is more difficult than A-levels, to find out who the best people are to study at Oxford. And this has been going on for a long time. So I went to Oxford, I joined Oxford in 1998. And the morning after you arrived, they'll give you a maths test. Um, and that lasted about an hour. It wasn't too difficult and what have you. But in 2006, they decided to make it longer, this test. They make it two hours instead of one hour. And they made it maths and physics instead of just maths. And they did it um, about a couple of months before the interviews. So that they had a chance to mark it and select the best people. They started to do this in 2006. And ever since then, it's become more and more difficult over the years. And now it's really quite a difficult exam. So um, given that the people taking it are school children, it's really quite a tough exam. And it's getting sort of more and more interesting over the years how they're trying to sort of find ways to make it more difficult and what have you. The engineering emissions assessment or ENGA is younger. It was um, devised in 2016 by Cambridge for those applying for engineering at Cambridge. But the aims of it are still the same. It turns out that A levels are not difficult enough to differentiate amongst all these clever candidates. So what they did was they made their own test and um, that it has to be done at the same time as the physics aptitude test that happen on the same day usually and it's a bit of a different exam the way they make it difficult is by making you work quickly the questions aren't that hard but you have to answer a lot in the time available it's a multiple choice exam so those are the two that i do the most tuition for and you also have the mat or the maths admissions test for oxford for maths and again it's a similar sort of premise they do it for the same reasons and then cambridge step as well that stands for sixth term examination paper that's been going for a long time. It happens at a different time. It happens after the offer is given out in the summer. And that's a very difficult exam as well, which requires a lot of preparation for. But these are the main two that I'm used to tutoring. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah, put down the MAT and the STEP on the board as well, just like um, because sure. the parents may just see in the first time. So that's Oxford, mm -hmm. that's Cambridge, mm. Oxford, Cambridge, and mm. these are for maths, and these are for things like physics and engineering. Mm -hmm. Is it for all kind of engineering or just particular type of engineering? 
I think it's all types. So if you want to specialize as an engineer, that usually happens in your later in your degree, such so as in your third or fourth years. So um, I think most engineering degrees start out roughly the same. So whether it's mechanical or aeronautical or electrical, you just kind of start off in the same way in the first year and you'd have to do the same test to get in and that kind of thing for Oxford and Cambridge. Yeah. Hmm. But different types of engineering, they got the, like different knowledge or skills. So how can one test testing like all of them? Are they just fundamental skills being tested? Yes, I think they're trying to sort of um, get an idea of what the student's going to be like in the future. So they're trying to test what the student will be like in a few years time, and what have you, and to see how they deal with new ideas or difficult questions and what have you. They can't really hope to test on the things in the degree itself because they're too difficult and too specialised, if you like. They're sort of testing potential at the moment rather than raw ability, I think. Mm -hmm. I got some other parents asked me a question before, like um, his son would like to apply for maths in Oxford or Cambridge, oh, sorry, Oxford or Cambridge. And he knows that either you have to take MAT or STEP, but his question is, is it pretty much the same level or one of them is easier than the other one? Well, the, the MAT takes place a bit earlier. So mm -hmm. that takes place before the interviews in October mm -hmm. and the St Cambridge STEP takes place in the summer after the interviews. Mm -hmm. So. Cambridge know that the students will be a, sort of a bit older and a bit wiser mm. and know more material and so on. So I would say the step is more difficult. Mm. Um, and I think people sort of know about step a bit more and they're kind of forced to get in line with step. The, the exams take no prisoners at all. It's a very difficult exam and it gets more difficult each year as well, as far as I can gather. So um, I would say step is more difficult, but it's mainly because the people that are taking the test are a little bit older and they know a bit more maths so they can get away with that I think but the MAT is still difficult there's no doubt about it and it's still a very good predictor of future performance so what I'm trying to say is to get 100 in the maths is very very difficult just as getting 100 in step is very very difficult or 120 which is what it's marked out of um, so it is the case that maths are a bit easier to manage but you still have to be above the competition, if that makes sense. You still have to perform better than the other people and they're all very, very smart. So it takes a lot of preparation and so on. But I think um, the math is a bit more manageable, I would say. Hmm, thank you. So we are halfway through our webinar, right? Like the first 15 minutes. So we like switch the topic to uh, Maths Challenge or BMO because they heard of like different names like Maths Challenge, Kangaroo, Maths Olympia. Can you, you, yeah, if you could like use the board to like briefly explain what the difference, what are the levels, which one is harder than the other one, why they got different names. Okay, so um, a lot of it is to do with age. So the Junior Maths Challenge, hmm. JMC, Intermediate Maths Challenge. IMC and the Senior Maths Challenge. SMC, and we can also sort of go backwards in time as well. So we have the primary maths challenge. Mm. And we're going to abbreviate that to PMC. And before that, we have the first maths challenge, which is quite a new thing, but a lovely idea nonetheless. First maths challenge, FMC. Okay. And these are the main sort of challenges, if you like, but you've mentioned kangaroos and Olympiads as well. If you do well, let's take the senior maths challenge, for example. Let's say you do very, very well in that. Let's say you get in the top 1,000 in the country. Congratulations, you're through to the BMO round one, which stands for the British, oops, British Mathematical Olympiad. Round one. And we're going to abbreviate, to abbreviate that to BMO. Is that okay? Hmm. Um, that's a tremendous achievement to do this. So, okay, as I say, only a thousand people each year get through it. And they have something in between. So if you do well in the Senior Maths Challenge, but not well enough to qualify for the BMO Round 1, you do the Senior Kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and if you do well in this one, you get through to Round 2, which only a hundred people each year get through to. And then beyond that, they're then trying to select people for the International Mathematical Olympiad, We're trying to snap people for the British team. Is that okay? Now these other rounds, these younger rounds also have kangaroos. So we also have an intermediate kangaroo here, if you do well enough. And you also have an intermediate Olympiad. So literally it's just like three levels. The math challenge is the first one, the kangaroo is the second one, and then you go to BMO. I would say that um, from the senior math challenge, you do one of these things. You do either oh, one. one of these, okay. Yeah, is that okay. Um, so, 
it's not a kind of link. It's not. It's not mass challenge. Then kangaroo. Then the BMO. Once uh-huh. you've done the paper here, if you yes. do well enough, you go that way. If you do a little bit less well, you go that way. Like, uh-huh. And you also have a junior kangaroo as well, and also a junior Olympiad. I got it. I got it now. So, yeah. like, if you do really well, you can go to kangaroo. If you do really, really re- well, just like top of the country, then you go straight to the team BMO round one. Yes, that's right. There's a so a thousand people take this. It's still quite a lot. Is that okay? And then a hundred of those would get through to BMO round two, and then after that, they would um the, the best marks there would then they would start inviting them to camps and so on, and so giving them further tests and try and whittle it down to the six members they would take to the international mathematical Olympiad each year. So yeah. it was all quite a lot to take in, but what usually happens is students sit one of these papers at school. They're very common. Yeah, most students will do these at school at some point. Mm. But okay, and these are all multiple choice questions. Okay, mm. and twenty five of them, and the kangaroos are also multiple choice. But these are longer questions. When you do an Olympiad, you do sort of longer style questions, um, and once you get the hang of them, it can be quite rewarding and fun to attempt and so on. So in the in the BMO round one, the exam lasts three and a half hours, but there are only six questions. And the BMO round two the exam lasts three and a half hours, but there are only four questions. Um, and in the International Mathematical Olympiad, the exam lasts, there are two exams, each of four and a half hours, which only have three questions each. So it's giving you an idea of how difficult the questions are. They're extremely hard. <laughs> that's what you're kind of aiming towards. So all this preparation you do is going towards here. And you can think of it just like any other Olympic sport or whatever. If a child is um, get, getting to this level or to the BMO round two, it's a a bit like um, those who are very, very good at swimming or gymnastics or whatever. It takes a lot of effort and determination. But there's a lot of um, use to be had in these earlier rounds as well. OK, so I've got, I've got some questions coming up where I'll be able to elaborate on that, I think. Mm, that's good. Thank you. That's that's a really good explanation. I think that's the structure that many parents do not get is because they got different names, different levels. But your explanation is like absolutely brilliant, very clear. Um, some of the questions that parents may ask is, um, if I want to apply for Oxbridge linked to our first half, e- either PATA, ENGAA, or MAT or STEP, does it help if I get some like math challenge gold medal, kangaroo, or even BMO, or like, th- is it necessary to have something like that? It's not necessary um, because not all schools will have these kind of things um set up is that okay so and oxbridge will take that into account so if the school doesn't do the senior maths challenge then oxbridge will be aware of this i suppose and try and um look at the student in a different way but participation in these is very useful for um oxbridge preparation because you're just better at solving the problems so if you can get to grips with most bmo round one problems you won't have any problems with the math submissions test, the MAT, for example. Mm. You should be expecting to get 90 or above in that if, you, if you're very good in the BMO round one. Mm. Think of it as toughening you up. Think of it as being a weightlifter. This is teaching you to lift extremely heavy weights. Mm. And then when you do the MAT, it's going to be easy to lift something that's lighter because you're so well-trained. Think of it like that. It's almost like you're kind of toughening the mathematician up with this kind of thing. So it's not essential, but this is very useful, I think. And um, I think some countries do better in Oxbridge applications than others. And I think it might be because their countries have um, more participation in Olympiads and so on. So some countries will kind of um, do this kind of thing a lot more, push their students hard to do well in in Olympiads and so on. And I think they will do better in the MAT. And there is scope for this in schools because what you'll find is that the maths curriculum in the UK, for example, is aimed at um, the sort of average maths student, which is fine. It has to be. That's exactly how it should be. But if your child is sort of good at maths, um, much better than average, then it would pay to sort of push them a bit. It's okay to kind of do that because you might find they're kind of maybe a little bit bored in class or whatever, um, not being stretched, and uh, maybe sort of 20 minutes a day of this kind of thing can really bring them on and so on. So I think it does make a difference to Oxbridge applications, but I recommend doing it for its own fun. I would do these challenges because the child enjoys them and wants to get better at something rather than saying, um, oh, I'm going to do this just so I can get into Oxford. They're, they're fun by themselves, or they should be. Thank you for joining us today's 
David 老師今集已經解釋得好清楚。如果你再想了解多一啲，甚至係關於點樣可以跟 David 老師去學習 Math Challenge 啊、誒 Math Olympia 嘅話，可以隨時聯絡我哋，因為我哋補習社係可以提供呢啲課程嘅。有任何問題嘅話，隨時聯絡我。我哋下個星期再見，拜拜。